by Fogel. Chapter 20. J. And it's clear that we are down to two contestants, Mr. McLeod, the drama teacher, yelled into the microphone, his words echoing off the far wall of the cafeteria. It was pretty obvious to me, too. As he'd gone from person to person or group to group, he'd held his hand over their heads and asked the audience to cheer and applaud. For some, there wasn't much more than a polite applause. For others, there was a good response, but nothing off the board. Then there was us and Julian. There wasn't much doubt that we were the top two choices, but I couldn't tell who was number one. I'd like to ask the three bears and Julian and Julian Jr. to remain on the stage, he announced. There was a little bit of grumbling, but most people were okay about things. What was the point of arguing? The audience had spoken. A few of the other contestants wished as well as they headed off. Finally, it was only the five of us left on stage. Well, really six if you counted the dummy. The winner of this year's contest will receive the following prizes. One, a lovely autographed picture of our principal. He held it up in his hand and there was a smattering of laughter and booing. Suitable for framing or placing on a dartboard. Not what I would suggest that. Two, a $25 gift certificate from our cafeteria. And last but not least, Central Secondary School t-shirts. What a truly amazing gift, package value at well over $25. Now this one is for all the marbles, Mr. McLeod said. Your applause will determine the winner. First, let's hear your applause for the three bears. There was cheering and whistling and stomping. Steve pranced and posed a little. I tried not to look at anybody. This was really kind of embarrassing, but okay in a really stupid sort of way. Finally, the applause died down. Thank you. And now for Julian and Junior. Again, there was a surge of cheering and screaming and stomping. I looked over at Steve. His expression matched my thoughts. It was louder, I thought. It went on for a good 20 seconds. Was that longer than our ovation? Kevin was staring straight out into the audience. His expression was stone serious. Did he think they got a bigger cheer? Having to stand up in front of everybody and be declared the loser wasn't what I had signed up for. This is close, Mr. McLeod said. Both groups deserve to win, but it seems like the audience has spoken. The winner of this year's contest is Julian and Julian Jr. There was a big cheer and a bunch of people jumped to their feet. Julian rushed forward to take a picture, t-shirt, and a gift certificate from Mr. McLeod. We shuffled over to the side and exited the stage, taking shelter behind the curtains. Well, at least we didn't have to stand on stage anymore. I was just happy to have the whole thing over. I hoped it meant that I didn't have to wear the bear costume for the rest of the day. Julian grabbed the microphone. I'd like to thank all the people who made this possible, Julian said. Well, technically, it was Julian talking, but the dummy was the only one moving his lips. I want to thank all of you voters, my fans, the little people who stood behind me all the way. There was a cheer from the audience. If you want to thank me, use your gift certificate to pay for my lunch today, somebody yelled up. Julian ignored him. And I want to thank my mother and my father and my teachers and, of course, God. And I want you all to know that I will dedicate myself during my one-year term as Halloween costume champion to bring about world peace and hunger and find a cure for male pattern baldness. Thank you all. I love you all. He bowed from the waist and then stood up and blew kisses out at the audience before he finally left the stage. It was a great acceptance speech, I said. If we couldn't win, I was glad it was Jules, Steve said. We could have won, Kevin said. It was close. Did you notice who was cheering for him, Kevin demanded. It looked to me like a whole chunk of the school, but I figured that was not the answer he was looking for. Every brown face in the crowd was cheering for him. Every last one of them. Did you see how many cheered for us? I hadn't really been noticing much of anything. My focus had been on my feet. None, not one, Kevin said, spitting out the words. Come on, Kevin, Steve said. Some were. None that I saw. And do you know why, he demanded? Because we're white. I know you're black, Kevin added. Well, half black. But look at the two of us. You can't get any whiter than Jay. Maybe they just like Julian's costume better, Steve said. I did think it was a great costume. Julian might have won fair and square, but maybe Kevin had a point. We were pretty white. If Zana wasn't the only person who felt that way about whites, then maybe he wasn't as far off the mark as Steve thought. I don't think so, Kevin maintained. They weren't voting for us no matter what. 
I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of the way they dress, the way they smell, the way they think they're better than us, the way they aren't grateful to live in the best country in the world. I'm just plain tired of them, and I'm tired of having to act like I should apologize for it. Nobody spoke. We just stood there, slightly off stage. I think even Kevin was surprised at what he just said. Look, Steve said, let's just get out of here for a while. Let's blow off fourth period and go out for a coffee. My treat. What do you think? That sounds like a good idea, I said. Kevin? Sure, let's go. He grabbed the hat off his head and threw the barriers into the garbage can. I guess that answered my question about staying in costume. I'm just tired of those people, Kevin snapped. I thought that getting him away from school might have helped, but he was still pretty wired. Of course, the coffee and the donuts weren't the best sedatives. They don't come to the football games to cheer for us. Some come, Steve said. Hardly any. They're always complaining about something. It makes me sick to the stomach, all that screaming about prejudice. They bring it on themselves by walking around and ignoring people, jabbering to each other in that monkey talk, keeping to themselves, thinking that they're better than everybody else. While he continued to rant, I tried to look casual as I surveyed the donut shop. It was midday, and other than the staff behind the counter, who were too far away to hear us, we had the place pretty much to ourselves. Forget it, Steve said. It doesn't matter. This whole contest doesn't matter. They don't matter. In the end, who do you think ruled the school? Kevin stopped talking and smiled. We do. Nothing's changed. It wasn't like one of them won either. Julian had a good gimmick going on. And if you think about it, up until this year, he was a member of the football team. I didn't know if that would make Kevin feel better or worse. You're right, he said. Better. It had made him feel better. Nothing has changed, he said. You're right, Kevin agreed. We still get to do the things we want to do. Who do you think has more fun, us or the guys dressed in towels? I don't know, Steve said. Towels can be nice, depending on who you're taking a bath with. We all laughed. You both know what tonight is, right? Kevin asked. Of course, Halloween. Exactly. And I think it's time for us to have more fun than the average bear. I'll pass the word on to the other guys. We'll meet behind the school at nine. I couldn't help but think about Brown Town and the vandalism. What do you have in mind? Steve asked. Not sure yet, but the school is a good place to meet. We'll go from there once we know how many guys and how many vehicles we have. Good. We are going to leave the school. And remember to wear dark clothes and bring a mask, something to hide your face. I'll bring everything else we need. My sense of relief quickly evaporated.